I'm standing in line. I was buying some stuff for this project we're working on. I'm standing in line. I'm a pretty courteous guy in public. And somebody was crowding me. I mean, like literally, not like pervertly rubbing up against me, but crowding me. Like a close talker? Yeah, like a very close person. And so I step back and I step on this person's foot and bump into him. I go, oh, I'm sorry. And she goes, you damn right you're sorry. Wow. And I look at her and I go, um, are you okay? <laughs> she goes, what do you mean? I said, do we need to call like somebody for you? Because you apparently are having a fucking episode right now. <laughs> and she, she just kind of say fucking episode? Yes. And she just kind of looked at me. I That's said, I was funny. trying to apologize for stepping into you because you were standing in my back fucking pocket. Yeah. Right. You know, and she just had like this whole attitude with me. And she wasn't like an old lady. She wasn't a young lady. But she was mouthy, though. She's a mouthy bitch, for sure. And I'm sitting there and I'm going, look, I was trying to be nice. But you're doing everything to take me out of that being nice guy. And so she just kind of looked and I just changed lines. I just walked away and got another line. It's amazing what people think they can get away with and say it to is. you. It's like, this guy's not going to say anything back. And they're yeah. always shocked when you do. Yeah, I, they, they do. And I, I, it's funny because... I can almost venture to guess what all of her affiliations are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I really can't. I can just go through the list, and I can probably hit out of 10. I can probably hit 7 out of 10 and be dead on. I, yeah, I'd I give just, that number to you. I would yeah, not bet against yeah. you on that. Yeah, but I like making shit up anyway. So. Right. Yeah. It's like, it, it's so, uh, so I, leave, I leave this store, <laughs> and I'm walking out the door, and I'm, and I'm watching this lady come out the door. Okay. And I'm trying to, like, Stay away. Let me ask you something. I'm just curious. This sure. Just to keep your train of thought. Yeah. What I want to ask you is, was she good looking or was she not good looking? No, not good looking. Okay. She was average. I mean, she wasn't ugly. She's pretty to somebody. Okay. Just not to me. Gotcha. And so I'm, I'm going out and I'm trying to get away from this person. Guess who's parked next to me? Her, of course. That psycho. That psycho person. So is she staring you down or is she not no. making eye contact with you? What she point? does is she opens her door and she's standing with the door open where I can't get into my truck. Oh, yeah. Taking her time, rearranging her back seat. Oh, so yeah. she's, you know, she's basically telling it's, me fuck you. It's all about her. It's literally all about her. So, um, so finally she shuts her door. Um, she walks around, gets into her car, gets in her car, sits down. And I just jump in my truck and take off. I was just like, you know, what the fuck? I mean. So was she ahead of you when she was getting, obviously, when she got to her car? No, no. Actually, I got out before she did. But somehow she got to her car before I did. Apparently, I was slow walking that day. I yeah. wasn't watching her. I just noticed that, whoa, shit, she's in her car. And so I'm, I'm, I get in my truck and I just drive off. And I'm thinking, man, you know, <laughs> it's been one of those days. I've had that. I've had where people... And it always, I'm not trying to escalate the situation, but I've had people say stuff to me and it's like, man, I'm not going to let you get away with that. I've been in restaurants and things like that and, and they'll, they'll make this little rude off comment. And my personality is such that I'm just, I can't, I can't let it go. It like takes over. I can't stop myself from saying what comes next, which is generally go fuck yourself or something equally as rude. Or if I can pick something out about them that I can make fun of, I go right to it. <laughs> and then they get this dumb look on their face like, I, I can't believe this guy said that to me. And it's like, oh, I've got plenty more to say. Just keep going. I dare you. You have that look like you've heard that way too much in your life. <laughs> and, and, and it's like they, they don't expect it back. They expect you just to sit there and take it. And, and I generally don't curse anybody in public. I'm pretty good about moving through, you know, and I might talk shit about them later right. around a bunch of friends. But when I'm with that person, I don't literally, I don't do that but this lady the way she just reacted you damn right you're sorry i'm like what then you run into that it seems like more and more everywhere you go like i'll hold the door for somebody they don't say thank you or anything no, i said oh you're i'll never, just say yeah i'll that's say you're welcome pet peeve. That's yeah, a pet yeah peeve. i'll say you're welcome or when you're in a parking lot and you clearly have the right of way but they decide i'm just gonna dive out there and uh, it, it's I don't know. It just it was just one of those days yesterday where it seemed like I was stumbling across every one of those clowns on their meds, or off their meds actually. It's 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 frustrating because I've like I said I've dealt with that and it seems to be more prevalent because being raised the way that I was, uh, I was taught that you 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 do hold the door, you do let people go first, you know, you try to be accommodating. But I've got this light switch. It's like I'll, I'll do all that. 
but then it just gets to this one point and it's like a complete I, I don't ramp up to it or anything it's just like the switch goes and it's like I'm <laughs> off and running at that point the walls have come down it's like right. exactly it's like this immediate adrenaline rush and it's like I, I'm I gotta do everything I can to just trash this person at this point I, and I'm getting more and more like that because it's, they just take advantage of that it's, just, a, it's a chemical imbalance I'm thinking but <laughs> could, it could be but I, I don't know man I just look at the way people are and they're just rude as shit yeah they're just rude as shit. And it's like, um, I got to get there before you do it, even though you're waiting in line for a fucking glass of iced tea. Right. I'm like, really? It's, it's it's a glass of iced tea. They got lots of tea here. It's that, it's that whole Wall Street perspective of dog eat dog. It's just, pre, it's, pre, it's become prevalent in our society, I think. You know, it's just, people learn that on TV. I don't know where they're learning it from, but a lot of it, I think, comes through in uh, culture, pop culture, I guess. You know, I'm going to eat mine and screw you. I, and, and and when you look at the shit that people are looking at, you just kind of got to wonder right. how much of effect that does or does not have on them. I, I just, but well, my wife and I were talking this morning about that, and there's nobody. A lot of her friends don't have cable; they don't watch TV. What do they watch? They well, they do stuff. They're at the gym, or they're they're working, or they're doing something, but they don't watch TV. And so when we visit with them, we're big movie watchers. Okay. We'll sit there and we'll watch two, three movies in a night. Their friends come over and, and it's like, they don't want to watch. They can't sit still. One, they can't shut up during the movie. Yeah. Because they're asking questions. I'm like, well, if you would watch the movie, I wouldn't have to explain to you what the movie's going on in the movie. And then my wife looks at me. She's all mad because she thinks I'm being rude. And it's like, well, actually, I'm not being rude. They're being rude. You know? And so I just... <laughs> I just want to know what's wrong with asking questions. Yeah. yeah. Well, what kind yeah. of questions do they ask, Ken? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like, fuck how, both of how you many, guys. How many questions would you say they ask in a given five minute segment? Yeah, you only get one, and that's where's the bathroom? The door is Understood. that way. Yeah, I call it the power of observation. You have two eyes and one mouth for a reason. I will give you the answer that, to the question you never asked. Right. The door is downstairs. <laughs> Yeah, see that way. You know, I'll never give up a secret because I don't like questions. There Ask me go. a question. What? Oh, fuck you. I don't yeah, you need. He just as soon get shot in the head as I get another question. I, I shoot me now. Shoot me now. I can. Hear that, I know? just don't like. Yeah, I just don't like having to relive a conversation with somebody. I just don't. I, I get it. I you know? get it. And, and and I know. I know that's part of the world. I understand that. But if it was something you needed to hear, you would have been there. I, say, I don't think you do understand. <laughs> oh, I do. My little world, there's no questions. I like that. Ken's keyboard to have all the question marks removed. <laughs> I'd say yes. Yeah. I'm all for that. And, and what, who's, how, and where. Not in the dictionary. Which don't exist in they Ken's don't. dictionary. <laughs> They don't, and, I, and I'm honest about that. I'm I'm very comfortable with that title. It's just I don't know. I, I just for me, it's like, look, it's not important, or I would have told you. There you go. Yeah, didn't need that piece of information. That's right. <laughs> That's hilarious. It is a quirk. I, there's no doubt. Um, I mean, you've all seen and experienced different levels of that questioning. Um, process it's, or, all, it's or, always or, good or goaded it out of you yeah I was gonna say it's well, always good it. to have a button to go to when you need right. a button it's good to have a button right. that's true there's the button you know what we need we need a house burning down that's what we need yeah <laughs> that's exactly what we need <laughs> so i can dance in a burning room there yeah. you go there you go that <laughs> nice, is too funny well nice speaking segue. of speaking of quirks and foibles i mean i'm sure you guys have them oh yeah, yeah. you think i'm gonna tell you sure <laughs> oh man sure Let's see. What grinds my gears? I got a lot of stuff that grinds my gear. Generally, rude behavior is what gets me started. That, like I said, that, it's it's because it was so ingrained in me. You know, my dad would almost practically beat it <clears throat> beat it into me mm -hmm. as to, you know, you're gonna you're gonna treat women with respect. This is how you speak. You say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. You hold the door for ladies. You know, that was I I I literally got in trouble for that as a kid. So when I do that. I don't know. I expect this certain amount of cultural respect. I guess that that this should be something that's cross cultural. That, yeah, you know, it's it should reciprocal. Happen everywhere. It should be reciprocal. So when right. you were talking about that, that was just grinding all over me. I can't. I, don't, I can't stand rude people. That that's probably my biggest my biggest gear grinding action. I think that's a good. That's an honorable thing to have. I think that um, 
rude people just take advantage of a lot of things, not just your kindness or your hospitality, but just the fact that they're sharing space with you and they're taking advantage of that kindness. <laughs> Quit breathing my air. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm the kind of person, I'm no. going to treat you like I want to be treated until right. you prove to me I can no longer do that. Right. And then when that happens, I start picking on the scab. I literally <laughs> flick, 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 right. and then it's full on. Now, some people just get the full on right away because I just don't feel like messing with them at that point. Sure. I just want to deliver the bomb. You bring a knife, I bring a tank. There you go. That's just how I am. I, and I can't change that. I get it. Hmm. What about you, Graham? What grinds your gears? I don't know. I was just thinking about that. He doesn't that. like being questioned either, um, by the way. I know. Yeah. I'd probably say my, probably my biggest pet peeve is being distracted, particularly if I'm if I'm working on something. Because I, I vividly remember many situations with my ex-wife or my ex-girlfriend when I was working on a project that I that they specifically asked me to take care of. So in the process of taking care of it, they would come in and they would interrupt me with something else that had popped up. And when I'm when I'm focused on something, I'm, I want to get to the end. Um, and they would have me well, stop that and go come over here and do this. You think and your girlfriends would appreciate that about you? After <laughs> I'm going, yeah, what's wrong with this? <laughs> After, you know, like the first couple of times, I, I see the fin- I see the finish line, but you're but you keep yanking me back. <laughs> so at some point I would just like lose my shit over it. I'm like, do you want this thing freaking done? I've or actually not? I've actually heard so, him say that. Right. So yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> see, I would be the kind of guy that says, Hey Sam, come here. And then you'd walk over and say, just think how close you were. Yeah. You could have yeah. just finished. <laughs> See, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> that that just just that that strokes the fur backwards for me. Right? I, I, the other thing that gets me is is uh, one of the other things that really gets me is having to do the same thing over again. Oh, I hate that double work. Really? Oh yeah, you've done it once and then you're coming back doing it again. True. That's 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 huge for me. I've I've had to do that with with my career choices, having to explain stuff to people. And it's not that I'm getting the same question. Yeah, it, it is that I'm getting the same question. That is what drove me nuts about it. I could handle a myriad of questions, but when you ask me the same question like four times, mm-hmm. uh, that's that's why I'd never do good in court. If any, if a lawyer ever got on me and asked me the same, <clears throat> excuse me, if a lawyer ever got, if I ever got in court with a lawyer and he asked me the same question four times, I'd probably just lose it. They would arrest me right there because I'd be like, "What are you stupid? I explained it to you four freaking times." What did you not get? So I got a great story for you. I haven't been jury summoned since this, by the way. I must have been taken off the list. But this is about six years ago, and I was picked into a voir dire pool. Mm-hmm. And so the two attorneys walk in, the plaintiff and the defendant are in the room, and it's the Harris County Courthouse. This is a lady judge. I can't remember her name. Really nice lady. I was juror number 36. I'll never forget that number. I'm sitting there, and the lawyer gets up, and he says, this, this is a case about a person that entered a refinery and got hurt in the refinery and then was dismissed by his employer after this accident. And what it was is he went to a, a manifold and attached a hose to fill the truck full of sulfuric acid, and it burnt his legs. And so the guy is sitting in court. He's sitting right there, walking, talking. He's not in a wheelchair. He doesn't look, he's all bandaged up. He looks pretty normal. Got in there under his own conveyance. So the judge goes, okay, so what I'm looking for, does anybody have a bias against insurance, oil and gas companies? And uh, he threw out some other things. So immediately, I didn't want to be there. My hand went up. I was, (laughs) my hand went up right away. He goes, sir, he says, "Um, juror 36, what are your objections? I go, well, I don't really have much of a problem against refineries or guys that work in refineries. He says, and you know, I'm a little upset because my insurance just doubled last week. He says, so, so what is your objection? I said, well, I got a problem with lawyers. And he goes, he goes, really? Yeah. He goes, really? I said, yeah, here's what's happening. This guy walked in this room under his own conveyance. Looks like he still has both of his legs. You're going to try to pick a bunch of people that are going to give him like $16 million, of which you're going to take 70%. Are they are, are they ushering you out the door at this point? Are no, you yelling this over your The judge is looking at me like, <laughs> what's this guy going to say next? So, the, so the, the attorney goes, so what's your point? And I said, or what's your question? I said, well, my question is, how do you sleep at night doing that? <laughs> and he goes, we don't need him. 
Done. And But they wouldn't let me leave. I had to sit there through the whole process. Oh. I mean, another... Oh, yeah. So what was the I mean, what was the message there other than so, that they could hold the, that over you? They hold me over. At the end of the thing, the judge says, okay, we've paneled a jury. She goes, I want to thank all of you for showing up today. I just want you to know, in Harris County, that's a big thing to get people to show up to jury duty because a lot of people just blow it off. He says, and clearly, as juror number 36 stated, you don't have to agree with what's going on in this courtroom. But you have to applaud that he showed up and went through the process. She goes, you have been refreshingly funny, <laughs> but I hope I never see you on a jury panel in one of my courtrooms. Yeah, you, well, you better hope I don't ever see you in a dark alley. Have, lady. A, have a great day. And they, they let me go. But it was, and I've never got a jury summoned since. I don't know if I got on a list somehow. But she was very pleasant. Yeah. But it was really, but I had to sit there through the whole thing. They would not let me leave the room. You know, I got I to gotta wonder what, lawyers and judges think about your your opinion about lawyers and not necessarily judges but you know why do you have that attitude is well i'm not i'm I'm not heard worse i think they've heard worse i just got it makes me wonder why they wonder why people don't or don't like lawyers Mm -hmm. is you're right it's insurance goes up because of lawyers and lawyers charge big fees because insurance it's it's a well they create they go out and create their own paycheck at, on the backs of others that's my biggest problem with them and that's exactly what you were pointing out it's not that i'm right it's a very cohesive existence between those two well they feed each other for sure that's right. the whole thing they generate they generate income bouncing off of each other well then they'll always tell you you know you always badmouth a lawyer until you actually need one well the reason i'm needing one in the first place is because another one just like you down the road suing me you asshole right uh, yeah it, for <laughs> sure uh, a good friend of mine is a lawyer. Well, he's a good friend of all of ours. He's a lawyer. And he always said it's it's never the black and white of a case. It's always who can convince people of the gray areas. Right. And that's, you know, in my mind, we walk into a courtroom thinking this is a black and white case, open and closed. But that's not what lawyers think. That's not how they act. They act on the little cracks that they can work their way into. And they try to panel a jury that's going to fit that narrative. And so honest people generally, and I'm not saying people that get picked are dishonest, but there's a, there's like a, um, there's gotta be a mindset to it. There you is know, a mindset to it. They gotta be malleable in some way. Mm-hmm. You have to be malleable to the, to the attorney's side. I, I was a legal clerk back in my younger days. I was a, a job that I held and it was funny listening and approaching it from behind the scenes and listening to these people prepare for this. And that's exactly what they're looking for. They want somebody where they can manipulate their opinion. That's exactly what they look for when they go into these courtrooms. Mm -hmm. It's it's disturbing to a degree. Like I was saying, they, they try to create their own work. They go out and it's, there are cases that are black and white. and It'd be nice to have a lawyer in all those cases. But there's so many of them, they have to create all this work so they can sustain themselves. It's almost like a bacteria. It's no, I mean, that's how I do right. it. It's 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 such a self feeding, self serving position. It is. It's it's a vicious cycle for sure. And you just wonder how anything gets done. I mean, in corporations. Well, and how much of it way. prevents? How much of it prevents from getting done? You know, I mean, how right. many people don't do something because? And it, and it rolls over into the corporate environment. It's the same way. You sit there and you you know you're, you're the you're the worker bee that comes in and you're listening to these discussions in boardrooms and meetings, and you go, how in the hell does anything get done here? I mean, and and if it does get done, is it actually the right thing to do? Right. And and is is it be, is it because people are succumbing to the power of the most powerful guy in the room? which may be just a fucking lunatic, you know? And, and generally you find that out two years later after the guy's been fired and you find out there's a knocked up secretary he had living in an apartment somewhere. I mean, there, there's all kinds of, I mean, I've worked in organizations like that to where the, the powerful bullies, they come crashing down hard and there's always, always skeletons in the closet that you just kind of suspected but never knew. And I got to think this is the same way in the judicial system. Has to be because there's a lot of power at play. Right. There's a lot of control over people that are weaker or need that job because that's all they can do. And it's, so they get rolled over by some of these guys. And it's just, it, it's, it's, I guess it's just man being man. It, that's really what it boils down to is it's, it's greed at its finest. And you, you really never escape it. I kind of muddled through this in my head the other day. I'm, I'm having to deal with an attorney right now over some IP type stuff. Um, and it's really ludicrous what she's trying to, what she's trying to prove through her case. Um, 
it's it's a it's a software IP, and the her premise is, well, I think you installed this software wrongly, so therefore I'm just gonna go ahead and say your license is uh, null and, and void at this point. And it's like, how can you even make that call? And I'm sure it's some stupid loophole with inside the EULA of the software that's allowing her to exploit this. And it's because some lawyer went and wrote that EULA the specific way that they could come in and if they ever wanted to just drop a hammer on you. It's, sure. it's unbelievable. Most of those EULAs look like about five drunk guys got together and wrote them and forgot what the guy said last week, rewrote it again. And it's so <laughs> you get like 55, 60 paragraphs of stuff you don't know what the fuck he just said. But they can all use it, can all be used against you. It's right. like, you know, I just wanted to buy this software and use it. It's just and legalese. I yeah, it, 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 it just something just occurred to me about how you were kind of relating that is it, it's just a legalese for backdoor. Right. That's it. Hmm. That's all it is. Yeah, it, it's just, I don't know. I, you, just, you just look at stuff and you look at the average guy that has to get up every day and deal with these morons. I mean, it's 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 crushing. It can it's, be soul crushing if you let it. It's crushing. You do. You walk out. You. I'm the kind of guy. You give a list, and I'm going to go out and accomplish that list, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to look for the other list because I have to have tasks. I have to be able to complete things. I. You were talking. Somebody's talking earlier about not being able to complete a loop. I have to. Right. Or I feel lost. It's it's. I have to shut that loop off, or it keeps me up at night, and it's it's a it's a it's a compulsion of mine. And I think it was the interruption part where you want to finish the project yes, you're on. Yes, yes, yes. I'm the same way. I'm very task oriented, and I may have three projects. And to the outsider, they think I may not be that organized, but I may have three projects running at the same time. Sometimes I have to step away from one, but I'm going right into another one. So I'm actually busy. I'm just not busy on what they think I should be busy on. Right. And I and I get them all closed, but I have to because of my process. Sometimes I have to step away. And I have to look at it from a different angle because I might be messing up. So I I can't just sit there and think about it because I'll obsess. So I move on to the next one. And so for me, it's it's my vicious little cycle of working by myself. Yeah, you don't want to get myopic and stuck and and not be able to see the forest from the trees type thing. So I get that. And there's nothing worse than somebody that walks in. And then puts the fly in the ointment right there. Yeah, and they, and they, and they, they, they try to coach you. And I'm like... Yeah, uh, <laughs> please go away right now. <laughs> <laughs> See, I do that, and I get so wrapped around the axle trying to do multiple projects. Right. I just at some point go, you know what? I'm going to chunk all this shit, move to Montana in a cave, and nobody <laughs> will ever find me. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'll kick the bear out of the cave, and in I go. That would be fun to watch. The, the it, bear fight. Bear, Todd fighting a bear. It'd probably only last about 30 seconds, and I'd be looking for Houston. Send me back home. <laughs> there, you know, it, it, it's it's funny you say that because I'm I'm a rural guy. I I can live by myself and not see anybody. But I, I have to interact with people. I, see, as I much think as I they, could get away. With, I think I could get away with not interacting with people. I can I really do it do. for short periods, but I can't do it for long periods. Really? I, yeah, I got to visit. I, it, it's for me because you you just go stir crazy, and um, I, I like to visit. I like to get around, but I also like some of the conveniences around here. I don't like the people I run into on a daily basis in general, because in the public, they have a poker face. Everybody has a poker face in public. They have this persona, the shield, whatever it is they have up front of them. And it's, it could be kind of tough because it's an all about me kind of world. But um, I like to get away. But then when you hit the country, you're going to hit a new kind of person in the country. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those that sit and visit. Yeah. Let's sit and visit. And and you're going to hear about, (laughs) The same shit you heard the last time this person cornered you. Yeah. You know? And, yeah, you know, I, I guess it's just people being people. I don't know. I pick on people, but I guess I have my own quirks as well. Yeah. Which we covered. So what kind of quirks would you say you had again? I didn't get that the first time. Yeah, it, it's it's one of those quirks that uh, I have like I'm going to hit you in the head yeah. with a fucking hammer fetish here in about three seconds. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> That's all for today's podcast. Thanks for listening to The Cooler. 